Welcome back from that break. Dr. Olua Tosin Olatujoye is a highly esteemed entrepreneur, businessman, and humanitarian with over two decades of experience in various fields. His expertise in sales and marketing, negotiation, public speaking, management, human resources, project management, and development is highly recognized in the industry, and he is estimated to have a net worth of $350 million, a testament to his success in the business world. Throughout his career, Dr. Olatujoye has demonstrated exceptional leadership skills, commitment to social responsibility, and an unwavering dedication to promoting ethical practices, and has been a role model for others in the field. He is also the group CEO of Xilox Group International. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's make welcome Dr. Ola Tujoye. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insight. All right, thank you Plus for having me. Africa. It is yeah, indeed a pleasure. Well, let's talk about uh, financial planning and uh, specifically uh, why it should be a culture for every uh, potential investor. Let's just break it down. Why does one really need to plan financially? All right, so first thing you need to understand about finance is that um, it's part of life. So uh, you need to understand financial planning very well because it's very important when it comes to your day-to-day -to -day activities and everything you want to achieve in life. Mm. So if you don't have the uh, knowledge of financial planning, then it means that you, you may not be able to achieve some things that you could have planned easily to achieve for yourself. Mm -hmm. So, um, and all these things are things that we want to achieve for ourselves. So, without it, I believe it will not be possible. Okay, fine. You know, you said it should be something like an everyday affair, like a daily routine. But uh, uh, does it really take any formal knowledge or is it something anyone could just them um, go about um, doing? For instance, uh, you have a family and um, of course uh, you have to plan uh, how the family would go about uh, their daily, their monthly expenses or even if you have a small business, you know, do you really need uh, maybe some sort of um, financial expertise to do financial planning? All right, so financial planning is like when you are building a house. You know, you want to build a house, you start from uh, foundation to the next level, to the next uh, level of construction, and so on. So, um, when you are trying to achieve something, and you know that thing involves uh, financial uh, goals, or you need to put in finance into it, then there's need for you to sit down and do your mathematics and mm -hmm. plan based on what you have, based on your income, and be able to map it out. And uh, the growth level you could get for yourself depends on the financial knowledge you have. Yeah. So it's very important for everybody to have that financial knowledge so that at every point in time you want to do something for yourself, you can be able to plan according to the knowledge you have. Okay, let's take it from where you just left off. You talked about um, financial knowledge. Uh, how do you go about acquiring that particular knowledge? Do you All have right. to be schooled about it, really? All right, so... Um, well, schooling is part of it, and you would also agree with me that when it comes to financial knowledge, there are a lot of financial information out there that you can use to equip yourself when it comes to planning your finance because, you know, um, everybody are limited to what they earn. And if you're earning your income and you're not able to plan it very well, you just realize that you may end up wasting all what you have. Mm. Yeah. All right, fine. So, but uh, if you're intend or you intending to uh, get into some sort of investment um, and uh, you need like maybe some sort of a financial plan are there do's and don'ts for instance uh, you want to invest uh, in uh, the stock market or in real um, the real estate sector are there some things that you should be wary of all right so one thing you need to know as a, as also a financial expert and uh, you need to understand some of the key things when it comes to investing in some of all these financial instruments and also some investment that are available outside there that people are you know, um, giving out to every individual that are interested. And the first thing is the risk aspect of it. Mm. So you have to consider the risk and be sure that where you are putting your money, uh, your money is going to come back to you. And looking at that, I've seen a lot of people because of interest being offered mm -hmm. by either the financial market, stock market, 
or maybe by the by a financial institution or by a finance company and end up losing all their capital mm. you know it's like you investing one billionaire uh, and you because of the interest rate on one billionaire you want to put one billionaire into an investment mm -hmm. that is high risk. high risk. So the first thing you check when you're investing is the, the level risk, of risk, the level okay. of risk, which is very important. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing you need to check is the, is the due diligence about the organization you are investing into, because you need to do due diligence. You need to know if the organization have the capacity to, to put your fund in there. And, and after then, you can now consider the return on investment, mm -hmm. which is the last thing you need to consider when investing. Okay. So the don't aspect of it is that uh, I've seen a lot of people um, keeping their money and not you know, making their money to work, work for, for them. them. Yeah, it doesn't make good sense because um, when you invest your money, then you make sure that you get good return on investment. So I would advise people to invest and not just to keep money. Then the second one is that don't hand your, don't, don't spend your, the, your income yeah. or your future interest rates or whatever you want to get from the investment even before, yeah. before it, it matures. matures. So you have to wait till it matures before you start planning on yeah. what to do with it because it's possible you plan before that maturity and anything can happen yeah. and you may not be able to you know, achieve your plan. So, you have to be very calculative mm. while doing all that. It seems like um, um, a tactical uh, process because uh, it's not everyone that can actually understand uh, levels of risk, uh, risk management, and what it takes to, you know, to know uh, the uh, the exact kind of investment mix to do. So, uh, at what point would you actually need uh, maybe like a, a financial? Uh, advisor or someone who can actually uh, push you in the direction that you should go when it comes to financial um, investments. Okay, thank you very much. One thing I've seen is that a lot of people have their doctor, a lot of people have their lawyer, but one thing people um, have failed to do is to have their financial advisor. Mm -hmm. Because um, everybody plan according to what they have. Where you are living, what you eat, the kind of car you use is based on what you have in terms of the money you have in your position. Mm. So if you have um, a financial advisor, uh, advisor that always advise you on how to manage your uh, monthly income or manage your funds at, at every point in time, then you'll be able to be guided on what to invest into and what not to invest into. Mm. So it's very important that as you're growing up in life, you have a financial advisor that can always be together with you to advise you what to put your money in and what not to put your money in. Okay, let me just it's very a, important. Let me just ask a very simple question specifically. A, lot, a whole lot of people, they seem to be working. They have a, a, an earning. Uh, they receive salaries at the end of the month or maybe they are, their businesses bring them profit. But at the end of the day, sometimes they find themselves that uh, they are not able to keep above water. They're always in debt. Is it a thing of bad financial planning or or what exactly can be attributed to that? Okay, I think it's, it's just your financial planning. Because financial planning is key. It, it's like planning your daily routine. Because uh, you, imagine you just wake up, you don't know where you're going. Mm. So if you, don't, if you don't pay serious attention to it, you realize that you end up spending money on what you don't need. And before you know, you overspend your funds, and at the end, you now be needing more. So when you have your income and you pay serious attention to planning it, you will know what you are portion for each of the things that you want to do. Mm. And that will put you in a proper planning. While you're doing that, you know what you're not supposed to do now that can wait later. Then you can arrange it in, in order of priority. The first one, the second one, the third one. Mm. The one you can postpone later, you can postpone. The one you need to do now, you can do now. But you have to ensure that on a daily basis or monthly basis or yearly basis, you have a clear Court. clear and understanding financial planning that you want to have for yourself so that you not uh, spend unnecessarily. 
All right, let's talk. When I started the show, I talked about um, two different camps, those that are plan the non-planners and the planners. While some people uh, take out a particular portion of their salaries every month, uh, they, they save towards uh, retirement or because uh, they have to compulsorily do so because of where they work hard. The, 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 state, the, the federal government and pension policy and all of that. Other people are very conscious of, uh, you know, uh, a long-term plan uh, where they want to be, uh, where they want to, to go to in the next, uh, say, 20, 25 years. But the question right now would be, uh, uh, how, what would you say to someone who feels that they don't really earn a, an, um, enough to be able to even save or to plan to invest in anything? Okay, so thank you very much for that question. Everything is about goal setting. The first thing is you need to set a goal for yourself. I have uh, one of my staff working with me, domestic staff working with me, and I know the salary the guy is earning is not as much mm. as uh, possible, but from that salary he is earning, he was still able to save from it. And he set a goal that, sir, although I'm a security man with you, working as a, as a security at your gate, but um, I want to see myself in the next two years becoming a millionaire, mm. doing that security job. And these guys, I, I encouraged him, I mentored him, and he started saving towards becoming a millionaire. So saving towards becoming a millionaire is a goal for him mm. that he wants to achieve. And as we speak, um, just Saturday, uh, the Saturday that is just uh, passed, the guy um, came to meet me and was telling me that, sir, do you know that my savings now is now 1.3 million Oh, wow. Interesting. And I look at his face and I said, my security, you are now a millionaire. <laughs> so because any uh, one million and above is a millionaire. Okay. So and I told him you are a millionaire. So you feel good that ah, now I'm now a millionaire, even despite the fact that I'm doing security jobs. So mm. he was willing to do more. And I'm sure in the next five years, in the next five years, he must have you know be able to save a lot of money for himself mm. to achieve a lot. So it's just about you. Plan what you earn. Don't live above your means live on below your means so that you can be able to still commit to saving a certain amount of money for either a future investment or for a future purpose. All right. It is still Business Insight on PLUS TV Africa, and I still have Dr. Oluwa Tosin Olatudre, my guest uh, with me. Uh, we'll be taking a quick break, and uh, when we return, we'll be talking about investment opportunities and specifically what you can do to mitigate against the issues of uh, inflation and uh, all of uh, the economic issues that we have in the moment when we return to join us again. All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We're looking at financial planning culture for potential investment. And my guest is Dr. Oluwa Tosin Olatuje. He's a group CEO of Xylos Group International. Uh, just before the break, we we're talking about how you should uh, not live above your means. You should live under your means. Okay, fine. That uh, has been noted. But uh, would one need to consider the issues of uh, macroeconomic issues such as uh, inflation and uh, all that maybe you might be saving right now, but uh, who knows what it will be worth in the next 10 years? All right, so um, considering the level of inflation, uh, the fact is that uh, inflation affects everything. Mm. The more inflation goes up, the more it affects whatever money you put mm. uh, in your savings account. So I would advise people, uh, don't just put money in your account and just put it there. Okay. Uh, the value of the money is depreciating every day. Get an account that is interest generating account mm. that can you know, fight against inflation. And when you put those funds in there, you know on a daily basis uh, the fund will keep appreciating. And these are the kind of work your financial advisor will advise mm. you to do um, when you're planning to save money for, uh, for future investment purposes. And for the ones that you know have the lump sum money in their mm -hmm. account, and I also advise to key it in into some you know unique investment that you can invest into. Speaking of unique investment, uh, incidentally, you are a real estate uh, developer. So, uh, how can one uh, plan their constrained finances towards uh, becoming um, home owners in future? And maybe, aside from being owners, uh, maybe they could actually uh, be big time. Uh, 
home developers or even deal in real estate and even start selling properties over time? Yeah, so um, I see that as, as an important part of life because when you look at the basic amenities of life, uh, shelter is part of it. And everybody wants to have a roof on their head, either by renting mm -hmm. or by owning. So um, it's very important that when you want to own a home uh, and, and you look at the income you're earning and you, you're able to put financial planning in place and save towards it, then uh, even if you cannot buy a house now, you can buy a house in the next five years. Mm. You can buy a house in the next seven years, in the next ten years. So it depends on how you have planned yourself. Uh, before now, you cannot afford to even buy um, a, a Toyota Camry for yourself. Mm. But now, maybe the status have changed and you're able to buy a more bigger car for yourself. So mm. there's no time you cannot achieve anything you want to achieve for yourself. So it's just a matter of um, savings and, you know, putting the money where you know there's going to be a good return on investment. Okay, fine. You know, in more senior climbs, uh, specifically, uh, the, the, a feature like a mortgage, uh, or mortgages yeah. come to play. How come we've not been able to explore that in this part of the world? Fine, I know there are several investment uh, opportunities and several in investment uh, dealers, uh, home uh, real estate developers who talk about how people can actually be homeowners in, by saving or making... Uh, payments by installment and all of that. But in, uh, in the Western world, uh, you don't even have to really worry per se, so long as you have some good credit report and all that, uh, you can actually be, uh, you can actually have that some house and over 15, 20 years, you're actually paying for it. Why don't we have such features here in the country? All right, um, a very good question. You agree with me that real estate is one of the key area people are really investing into. Mm. It's very heavy because looking at the housing deficit in the country, and it's not a, a joke, it's, it's quite big. And uh, we're looking at over 28 million on housing deficits. And uh, looking at the statistics in the next few years to come, that number is going to increase. So um, I believe people should be able to buy a home for themselves. And um, in, the, in the outside world, it is very easy to, you know, to pay within a long term to, towards acquiring a home. Mm -hmm. Some 25 years, some 20 years, some 30 years, depending on your age and mm -hmm. when it is expected of you to retire. Yes. And these are the things that um, we find difficult here to get because, um, number one, you, you look at it that the product available there is not meeting up with the needs of people. Mm. Then, number two, the people behind the mortgage scheme for people to be able to, you know, use to finance their home ownership and not also being, uh, bringing out the kind of products that people can key into it and be able to pay for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. We are actually working towards that. We've seen the pain point of people towards owning a home and we're actually working with a mortgage bank to synergize together to structure um, a product that will be able to solve the needs of people when it comes to home ownership and in turn reducing the housing deficit we have. All right, and um, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Um, Oluwato Sion-Olatujoye. But just uh, before we actually wrap up right now, just very one quick advice that you'd give uh, to uh, a small um, business, because each time on the program we try to advise some um, small businesses so they can actually upskill and um, get bigger. So, for instance, now you are a business and uh, you are actually making profit and you're, you're actually operating uh, in length of five years, uh, you've been operating rather. So, how would you advise them so they can stay afloat? So, uh, some of them might not be thinking of plowing back their, uh, their profits into investments. So, what would you say to such uh, business owners? Such okay, so what I would say to business owners like me, mm. and especially the ones that are just coming up, mm. Um, my advice is that there's difference between spirituality mm. and business. Yeah. I have seen a lot of people trying to bring spirituality into business and be thinking that, oh, in the next two years, God will do it. I'm going to make a lot of profit. Yeah. So I can start even spending my profit mm. before I make it. 
So it doesn't work that way when it comes to business. You may be thinking things is going to be better, mm. and it may not. But as an entrepreneur, with the kind of entrepreneurial spirit you have, mm. you need to keep going forward. So right. uh, with that, I would advise that ensure that you invest your money in the business mm. and you generate enough profit, and you can then pay yourself from the profit according mm. to your, your shareholding structure you have within right. your organization. Mm. So don't spend your profit before you, you, okay. you, you get it. So All right, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, yeah. We uh, do appreciate your time. Okay. My guest has been Dr. Oluwa Tosin Olatu Joye. Uh, he is uh, the group CEO of Zylas Group International, and of course, he is a real estate developer. Many thanks for being a part of thank the show. Thank you so much. All right, as we go on the show, as we go on the show, there is the need for stakeholders to harness the value of facility management as it has the potentials to transform the nation's economy. This was the position of the president of the International Facilities Management Association, IFMA, at the third edition of the Advocacy Day held in Lagos. I'll leave you with details of that. Business Insight returns again, same time. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Bye for now.